Good afternoon and welcome to eSIMS Engineering. I'm recording this on a Friday, so happy Friday to you. I hope that you're having a great day and you're, uh, that you had a great week. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over 4.4, and this is by request of a student. I, I was kind of hoping that the um, video was short enough, or sorry, the video, the uh, lesson was short enough, and the, uh, you know, a lot of parallels from algebra and geometry <clears throat> that you might already have from uh, prior classes, but uh, student did request a video of this lesson, so I want to go ahead and do it. And not only am I going to do a video of this lesson, I'm also going to give you an Excel tutorial on number one, but I'm also going to do the same question in Google Sheets. So you can have, if you don't have Microsoft Office at home uh, and you really want to do this assignment, really need to do this assignment, there's still a way to do it in Google Sheets, so I want to show you that information as well. So we'll start with Excel. I've got the spreadsheet uh, already created uh, previously. You just basically need to make a three-column spreadsheet. Um, these are not the names. You don't have to put the names exactly as uh, as is named in the uh, in the chart, but you of course want to make sure those numbers are accurate. So annual rainfalls in the first column, column B in this case, and uh, annual runoff is in column C. So our directions and what we're kind of given with guidance here is that this is a data we're determining a mathematical model for the amount of rainwater that runs off in the ground in the surrounding waterways with respect to the amount of rain that falls in the ground. Now we have what's called a bivariate situation, um, which you know by of course meaning two. Um, um, which is perfect for scatter plots. Now, you hopefully have had some sort of prior exposure to scatter plots in Algebra 1, in your Algebra 1 course. And basically, when you compare two quantities on two axes, an X and a Y axis, and then you see if there's a trend. So if one, for example, if the item on the X axis increases, does the item on the Y axis, uh, y axis increase as well, or does it decrease, or does it really have no correlation? So we're going to investigate that, and we're going to use scatter plots to investigate that information and kind of get uh, some quantifiable measurements about what the what, what, we, what the uh, answers to those questions are. So we've already, we've already made the spreadsheet. So what we're going to do is create a scatter plot and find what's called a trend line. So here's the questions that we have to do. We input the data already, so A is already set, and we're going to create a scatter plot. And what we're going to do to create that scatter plot is we're going to highlight the data, and we're going to go to, let me just maximize my spreadsheet software. Um, we're going to go to the insert ribbon. And we're going to put, uh, the easiest way is to go to recommended charts, actually. And if you put the data in, as I've mentioned here, you should have one of the options be a scatter plot. Uh, it was, in this case, it's just called a scatter. And it gives you a quick preview of what it's going to look like. And you hit OK. And there is our, uh, our preliminary scatter plot. So you see here on the x-axis, we have the rainfall. And on the y-axis, we have the runoff. And of course, we can edit this chart to, um, to, do, to make sure that we get that information in there. So in this case, access title here. And notice what I did here in Excel. I just hit this plus button, and I can add all of these things on here. And you'll notice, notice there's a trend line that we'll be adding as well. So I'm going to label the x-axis annual rainfall. And I'm also going to change the chart title as well. And this is going to be, uh, this is going to be annual runoff. And if you remember from your earth science class, runoff is when water runs from land into either the ground or into rivers and lakes or surrounding bodies of water. Um, rainfall versus runoff, we'll call this for a chart title. And let's just make this chart a little bigger. We don't need to have all this blank space, right? Let's make a nice sized scatter plot. OK, so now you'll notice the way a scatter plot works is the x quantity is plotted compared to the y quantity, and we just get a point. So in this case, this is 21.2.2. .2. That would be the stone corral 21.2.2 uh, point right here. So a scatter plot, we just do on that. So that's good. Now we're going to add a linear trend line, and we're going to format the trend line to forecast backward five units. Let me show you how to do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add the trend line in the first place, right? And when we check this box, it's going to add a trend line. There's an arrow here that leads us to more options. We'll hit linear. We could hit linear, but there's also other options as well. We're going to use linear. We can use linear forecast. And we're going to just go right to more options. And the reason we do that is because we want to actually set this up so that it forecasts different possible combinations. It wants us to go backward five units in this case. So we're going to go backward, and we're going to type in five. And the other thing we want to do is we want the chart to display the equation. And we also want it to display what's called the R squared value. Now, we can close these options. And let's just explain what this means. Okay, So if you've never seen a trend line before, a trend line basically is a linear equation on a scatter plot that pretty much approximates where most of the data is. A really highly correlated, concentrated set of data will have most of the points very, very close to the line. 
and one that's not so concentrated will have points that are very far from the line. In this case, this is a pretty good trend line, right? So we have points that are obviously not on the line because this is real life data, but notice the trend is kind of apparent here, right? So we have points that definitely, as X increases, Y increases, which makes sense. You got more rain, you're gonna have more runoff. That kind of makes sense. So these two values here, this here is the linear equation that would produce this. And we can use this linear equation to extrapolate or interpolate other values that are not on our, uh, on our chart. So for example, if I want to say, well, uh, what if we had 35 inches of rainfall? How much runoff would we get? Well, if I go to this trend line and I kind of go to the 35 inch mark and then go up, I can see that this part right here, okay, that's about 12 uh, 12 inches of runoff. So 35 inches of, water, of rain, 12 inches of runoff. This R squared value, this is what's called the correlation coefficient. This number is always between zero and one. And it actually, can, sorry, it's always between negative one and positive one. It can be negative one to indicate negative correlation. Negative doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing. It just means that as Y increases or as X increases, uh, sorry, as x, x, as x increases, y would decrease, okay? So they would go in opposite directions. That's a negative correlation. That would be noted if this r squared value was negative, but since it's positive, that's a positive correlation. Further, the value is very close to 1. 0 0.92 is very close to 1. So if we have 0 0.92, that indicates a strong correlation. So the sort of table of values, strong correlation, right? Strong positive correlation, let's call it, okay? That means that the r squared value is between 0 0.7. All right, less than or equal to r squared, less than or equal to one. If it was actually one, every point would be on the line, right? Okay, anything that's between zero and 0 0.7 is considered weak, okay? So if we had a value that was, say, 0 0.65, then that's gonna be, uh, we consider that strong, uh, sorry, not strong, we call it, consider that weak positive correlation. That means that there's enough values that are kind of floating around that don't really make too much sense, okay? We would call that weak positive correlation. And if these values were negative, then we would say instead of positive, we'd say negative, right? So negative 9.2 would indicate a strong negative correlation, a negative 0 0.65 would indicate a weak negative correlation. And if the value is really close to zero, even I would say argument of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, even 0 0.3, I would say there's no correlation, okay? And some of that's a little bit subject subjective, but the R squared value is pretty much the tool that kind of gives you a guide on what the correlation actually is. Okay, so we've done that. And uh, I know that it says here for this, we're gonna print the graphical model showing the trend line and equation. Well, we wanna make sure that we have that on the, on the screen. And the question here is, would you describe the relationship between an, an average annual runoff and estimated annual runoff as a strong correlation, weak correlation, or neither, and provide your evidence? So I've kind of answered that question already, but I wanna reiterate that answer again. If you have a high R squared value that's very close to one, specifically higher than 0.7, that's sort of our barrier for that, that indicates a strong correlation. And if the R squared is a positive, value, it's a strong positive correlation. So in this case, R squared is 0 0.92. This correlation is quite strong, okay? Quite strong, very strong positive correlation, clearly indicating by the both the plots, the points that we have, but also by the trend line itself. So that is basically how we would do number one in Microsoft Excel. Number two is done pretty much the same way. I'm not gonna do number two in this video because I still would like you to have something that you can try on your own, but this pretty much is how you would do number one in this activity, which is basically half the work, so that's that. I also promised that I would do the same thing for you in Google Sheets. So if you don't have Microsoft Excel, then you need a way to be able to answer this question in Google Sheets. So we're going to do this by taking the same spreadsheet we have it plugged into Google Sheets and we're gonna do pretty much the same set of procedures. So if I highlight the data and I click, I can either click this chart button here or I can also go to insert menu and I can also select chart and do the same thing, okay? So I'll do the chart button. And when you press the chart button in Google Sheets, it actually will give you sort of what it thinks is gonna be the chart that you want. In this case though, we don't want a column chart, okay? So we're going to go down and we're going to go to the scatter plot and we're gonna pick this scatter chart. But we don't want, obviously, we, want, we don't want it to be a frequency table like, it's, like this is given here, okay? We want the x-axis to be the B column. And I think that what we could do next time is instead of s selecting all three of them, I think if we picked the, um, if we pick the first two columns, it actually would start with, actually, let's just try that right now. Let's try that, okay? We're doing this live, right? So let's, let's just select 
this column and ignore column A. Let's see if it automatically puts a scatter plot. No, it still doesn't do a scatter plot there. But let's see if it gives a better format here. Okay, there we go. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so we want now. Okay, that's that's more like what we were looking for. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to have that scatter plot. We're going to customize it. And what we do on customize here is we're going to go to well, first we want our chart title, right? Annual rainfall versus annual runoff, right? I know that's not what we titled the first one, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to do, we're going to go to the series and we're going to check the box that says trend line. And when we check the box that says trend line, we want to label use equation and we want to click the show our squared value, okay? So see here we got that same information. Right. The other thing I would like to do, and I'm not going to worry about it for this video because it's the purpose of this video is really to show you how you can get the trend line and the scatter plot information. Um, but I also would lock the x-axis and make sure it displays starting at zero zero, so this so we don't get any potential bias uh, on the graph. But that's neither here nor there. But that's basically the same way, the same way you would get the scatter plot in Google Sheets to get the same information that you can get in Microsoft Excel. You use this method right here. So here we have. Uh, b based on the, this, we have the same equation, 0.619x plus 9.78. The formatting is not that good, uh, unfortunately. We have no separator. We don't have a line uh, on there to kind of delineate that we have one equation, then we're making another statement. So just understand that this is the equation. This would be a y equals 0.619x times uh, plus 9.78, negative 9.78. And the R squared value is 0 0.922. So once again, you get the same information just using Google Sheets instead of Microsoft Excel. So there you have it. That's your tutorial for uh, activity 4.4 from the IED curriculum. I hope that this video helped you. If it did, I would love it if you would click like on this video. And as always, uh, subscribe to eSIMS Engineering to follow us for more um, PLTW related curriculum videos and other helpful tips and things that help you in your uh, engineering education. I hope you have a wonderful day. Enjoy your Friday. Don't forget to be awesome.